So, tell me something terrible. Do you want me to get you some iced coffee? It's not like way an energy, different. Just like a What's shot of iced coffee instead of an entire... It takes 45 minutes from caffeine to travel from your mouth to your small intestine where it can be absorbed and actually used. What the fuck? Sorry. Got biochemical there for a minute. 45 minutes? 45 minutes, yeah. That's, that's, a, a, little, that's a little known fact about caffeine. There's a placebo effect that takes place almost instantly. Yeah. But the actual caffeine doesn't affect you until 45 minutes once it reaches your intestines. We're going to start the podcast like that. Fun facts with, I have a biochemistry degree and Tiffany. Um, <laughs> so you're saying I need to, to drink my coffee earlier in the morning. No. Yes. Your brain can, uh, that's the, th- brains are so cool. So it understands when you consume caffeine because it knows, like, obviously it associates the coffee flavor with the caffeine. So the placebo effect of, I just drank coffee, I should be more awake, takes place instantly. But the caffeine doesn't actually hit your like body in a reusable way for 45 minutes once it travels that far into your digestive system. I do know that the receptors of like the parts of your brain that accept melanin, Uh um, the reason why caffeine works is because the similarly shaped molecules, uh, it's better shaped molecules. So caffeine will replace melanin. Mm -hmm. Um, That's all I know. But I I didn't know it took 45 minutes. I do wonder the long term effects of all these people giving their kids melatonin. Anyway, that's for a different time and topic. People are giving kids mel- melatonin? Oh, Dayquil, NyQuil, whatever, makes like a kid Z thing that like knocks your kid the fuck out. And it's <laughs> hmm. I wonder if whiskey <laughs> is a better <laughs> right. choice. No, that's why I'm saying I like I get like. You know, that's what they did like in the 1800s. They're like, oh, they're teething, just put some whiskey on it. Well, like, fine. yeah, I get if your kid's sick, like, yeah, sleep's probably going to help. Yes. But I don't know if aiding their sleep like because I, I guarantee there's parents that give their kid that like four nights a week you know oh yeah so I just like if your the... brain is not fully developed until you're 25 introducing any sort of chemical is going to alter it constantly is probably not a good idea <sighs> that was a hearty yawn there was a guy that used to come in supposed to warn Dollar people before the yawn that would buy sleeping pills and the like li- the caffeine pills and i was like bro you're going to die. You're on a high-speed roller coaster that's going to crash at some point. Did I ever tell you about the couple that would come in and they, like, begged for the coffin cold? Like, they're the reason why we had to put the oh, coffin cold behind the cupboard. making it into drugs, Yeah, probably. I remember, or doing, like, what were they called? Fuck. There was one where you would drop them into, like, a carbonated beverage, and that was how you would drink it. Huh. And I can't remember what they were called. Anyway, I remember them coming in one night. It was like 7 o'clock. We just got done unloading the truck. And I was like, no, we're not going to get... I'm like, the coffee... Yeah, we got the truck in because they were asking. And I'm it's like... It's somewhere in those yeah, 100 it, packages. Yeah, it, yeah they're in, they are in one of the 32 unmarked, unmarked three-foot by like two-foot boxes we just got in. And yeah. they were like... Adamant. Twitching. It yeah. was rough. Like, guys, meth is bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. So, um... Should, shall we introduce ourselves? Sure. Hi, I'm Tiffany. I'm Scott. And we used to both work in retail at the same place, and it was awful. We did. And you're listening to Tell Me Something Terrible. Yeah, you are. <laughs> and it's way later than usual. It is. And we got done watching the stream, a live stream for a friend. Big J1066 with a shout out. <laughs> got to do all the shamelessly plugging. Yep. And Scott is about six busies in. It's been a long evening. And I'm going to open my fifth. So here we go. ASMR, everybody. It's been and a while. Hold you, on. We've got to do the ASMR. Okay. Yeah, we haven't had Vizzy's in a while. It has um, been a while. We've been on a very vodka kick. But it's um, been really snowy, so we got to kind of like invite the sunshine in. in these Michigan. are 100%, yeah, like a summertime drink, but they yeah. just sounded good. Yes. And we went with the classic shark, shark cootie board. Shark um, cootie board. So board, I haven't yes. had a carbohydrate in like hours, which is probably part of my problem we'll see how that tonight goes there might we'll be see pop- how the shugs you go. might hear popcorn popcorn and <laughs> popping in the back popcorn <laughs> popping in the background yeah that's I probably wanted... gonna sound really good coming through with all the they say you like pop your peas i the say p- i'm sure popping peas. popcorn really pops the peas <laughs> good thing we have these nice dynamic mics with the little mic cover on yeah, them. we don't use um pop filters though we just use wind covers these oh yeah these Ugh. are for reporting outside slash 
Oh, good. So when we have a hurricane in Michigan. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we'll do a live podcast when a hurricane hits Michigan. We can do a live outdoor podcast one of these summers if you want. Oh, if you want to do like a nice peaceful one like with birds. the birds. Oh, my God. <laughs> Shut up. I hate you so much. Just bees buzzing. I could. We have a lot of bees. We do have bumblebees that live in the side of our barn. We do. Like in the walls. Yes. One I'm, of the, Here's the thing. Oh, God. One of the barns that we have. Oh, yeah. We have a tiny barn. And, then and a, a big barn. And a big barn. That's completely normal for people that have, like, live in an old farmhouse. I think that's pretty actually actually pretty normal. Yeah. Anywho, are you ready to get topical? Yeah. Like an ointment? Let's get topical like an ointment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Apply two to three times a day liberally in the affected area. <laughs> that's a steroid. It's not an... What, what do you think they do with an ointment? What do you think the instructions are on an ointment? I mean, like a prescribed ointment, yeah. Yeah. But like what are you talking about? Preparation like I was thinking H? like... Sk- <laughs> I was thinking like skincare, which is like one to two times a day. I was going to do a Dr. Evil and I rolled my R. Like he's. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly he's French. Yeah, preparation. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that was terrible. So um, the shark cootie That's board. That's a little foreshadowing how this podcast is going to go. <laughs> Horrible. Uh, just um, more disjointed than usual. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were, Scott was like, hmm, also, maybe we, we should record tomorrow. I'm like, nah, we're doing it tonight. So if it's chaotic, she, we apologize. Committed. I was prepared to regroup, sleep this off, and then come back tomorrow in a probably similar state of mind. But much to my fight. Here we are. Anyway, yep. I just wanted quickly, we've had a lot of new listeners like starting in episode one. We have. And getting, it's always, I feel like they listen to the most recent episode, then they'll go back to the episode one and then try to work back up. All right. Hopefully. Anyway. Hi. Hi. New people. Hi, new people. Yep. Big influx. Not big influx, but enough to notice. Yes. Yeah. Like, we are weird about tracking the numbers just because we got nothing better to do. Yeah. So. I mean, I have something better to do. Well, I mean, I technically have a job, but like, this is more fun. It is. It is very fun. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, there's a lot of fresh ears around here. That's creepy to think, (laughs) say out loud. Yep. Um, So welcome, fresh ears. Yes. Prepare to be violated. What did you just do? I flipped my my out of your shank it out of my cord. Oh, I thought you were wafting a fart. Yeah, no. It, it looked very wafty <laughs> of you, and I was no. like... No, I have a lot of layers on. I was just worried the mic might have picked it I'm up. I'm back warm. Like, I'm warm now that I've got, like, my oh. plippers on and my yoggers and my sweater and my shank it. What is this shank I'm nice it? and warm. It's my Isn't shawl that blanket. Is that a poncho? That feels like cultural appropriation, so I'm going with a shank it. It's a shawl and a blanket. I don't... I think it's just the word for it. I, shank it sounds very prison-y. Exactly. Anyway. <laughs> That's the vibe I'm going for. <laughs> we should do a Weird Al version of Beat It, but we're going to call it Shank It. <laughs> just a parody of a parody? It's gonna be pe- yes, a parody of a parody, but it's going to be people in those with shanks underneath them. So they're yes. going to be like, do you like my shank it? And then they shank someone, and then they run away. Yep. Okay. That's going to be the whole music video. Anyway. We're not going to get thrown in jail we're gonna at go, all for that. We're going to go so viral. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> Weird Al is so relevant nowadays. Everybody, I'm going to ask our daughter tomorrow if she knows who Weird Al is. Absolutely not. She's eight. Good. And then I'm going to make her. So two things we're going to do tomorrow. One, okay. I'm going to make her watch Weird Al videos. All right. And then two, I'm going to make you watch And One Mixtapes because you've never seen them. And what are they? We talked about this two nights ago. Did we? <laughs> yeah. Remember on my way home from basketball? I was nope. like. Have you ever watched And One mixtapes? And you're like, no. And I was like, And One, like the sports, like basketball brand, yes. the sports brand. Yes. <laughs> See, okay. Anyway, that'll be tomorrow's homework: pancakes and YouTube videos from Scott's childhood. So <laughs> that'll be fun for all parties involved, mainly me. That sounds like a great time. Good. That's, okay. Anyway, proceed with your story. Let's get started. It's only been to nine and a half minutes. Why not? Great. I'll edit this down to. Eight and a half minutes. Rude. <laughs> so. That's like the one thing I contribute to this podcast. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you. So um, let's get started then. Now that we're. Shall we? Knees deep in. So um, for the last 1,000 years, a symbol of wealth and popularity amongst the Chinese aristocracy served to honor guests as a symbol of defeating the dreaded shark and its assumed medicinal powers, people have been consuming shark fin soup. Okay. I thought you were going to go blowfish there for a moment. That's Japanese. What is this, Chinese? Chinese. Okay. Okay. All right. I think that's a pretty 
acceptable mistake. Yeah, there's only like a slight bit of ocean between yeah, no, the two. I, I've heard of shark fin soup. Yes. That's as far as I've ever I'm gone. I'm pretty sure I've mentioned to you. In case you care, my favorite animals are both apex predators. One is what the does that wo- say about your character traits? Probably a lot. I just want to do a deep dive here. Let's, Psychosomatic. That's fine. Anyway. Um, so one is the wolf and uh-huh. then one is, um, so you're sharks. So loner apex predators too. Wolves are not loners. Mm. They're pack hunters. The expression is what? I don't give a flying <laughs> fuck. A lone wolf. <laughs> I am so far left that you would never call me a lone wolf. I'm just giving you a hard time. I mean, wolf pack is also a thing. But yeah. Right. No. Wolf. No. There are never loner wolves. The only, Okay. Here's the thing. Here's the common misconception. I'm going to blow your all's fucking mind. If there is a lone wolf. Second time. First it was the caffeine. That the motherfucker uh-huh. was a scapegoat, which means he is the lowest of the lowest al- males. And the alpha male came along and went, hey, you're a piece of shit, and kicked him out of the pack. And so now he's wandering about by himself, and he's such a piece of shit, he can't even develop his own pack. Thanks, Scar. So I just really want (laughs) all of these people to take one fucking moment to really ruminate on the concept of a lone wolf being a piece of shit that's been kicked out of a pack. Okay. I don't know what soapbox you're on, but (laughs) there's... (laughs) He could have rabies too. He could be. So the the scapegoat more often than not was like not a very strong male wolf, uh-huh. and he was stuck at the back, and he was also beat up a lot, and also like didn't he was literally the last thing to get food. Uh huh. It doesn't matter. It literally doesn't matter. Anyway, so we're not talking about wolves. Uh, no, we're talking okay. about sharks instead, who do tend to be actual lone predators. Yeah. yeah. Um. Wolf fin soup not as popular in no China. No, no. Shark fin soup, though. Does China is. have wolves? I'm sure northern China probably has some sort of wolves. Okay. I'm going to ask... I, my favorite thing is to ask questions that I know you aren't prepared to answer. No. Yeah. I know about North American wolves, and I already gave you what I remember from like doing a report when I was in middle school. Okay. This sticker has to come off of here. It was a really long report. It was like 10 pages, because I'm a nerd. I, um, I don't think I've ever written a 10-page anything in my life. I've written multiple 10-page. Well, no, my, you have your thesis. Yeah, my se- it's not a thesis. I don't have a doctorate. It's a senior research project from my bachelor's degree. Okay, so sorry. It was 28 pages long. It was long, yes. Yeah, and we have we have it. Somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, it's some, it know where it's at. It's on the bottom shelf of the bookcase upstairs. Mm-hmm. God, that's awful. Um, So <laughs> let's keep plugging along, shall we? Uh, well, we're two sentences in. Yep. Why should Why should we keep going from here? <laughs> <laughs> so, along with China's increase in the overall wealth, this soup is now a staple at weddings, business conferences, and any excuse to get fancy. Really? Okay. Yep. Olive Garden serves it in China? Yep. And then they all get together and they eat shark fin soup. Would you like the Zupa or the shark fin soup tonight? <laughs> Ooh, Zupa sounds nice. <laughs> we have shark fin soup in the United States. I'm sure we do. Only right. nine states have banned it. Okay. We have 50. I'm, thank you. <laughs> okay. In case you didn't know, I know Geography's that Geography's ge- not my strong suit, <laughs> yeah. but the closer you get to home, the better I get with it. So I know our capital. <laughs> what is it? Lansing. Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> Excelling. What's Ohio's? Ohio's? Is it Columbus? I honestly don't know. I think it's Columbus. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. I'm glad Ask- you asked, having no idea. <laughs> that was the joke. Um. So... There is a higher demand for this novelty item because more people can afford its hefty 100 plus dot like US dollar price tag. Per cup or bowl? Per bowl. Yeah. So China's um, economy is booming. More people at their wedding? Yeah. Why are they buying this shit? So uh, China's economy is booming so more people can afford it. So the demand for it is increasing. Gotcha. So the shark. Uh, featured in the dish uh, is generally tasteless and has zero nutritional value. Okay. It's literally just for the novelty of it. So they'd be better putting tofu in there. Yes. Cool. So it just adds texture to the dish and the fibers from the shark fins can be used as a noodle substitute. So it's gluten free. So they could put zucchini in, but you're saying they go a shark. Yeah. It's part of their culture. That's cool. Yep. Um, and it's also used in, the, they also make a dish that's uh, shark fin dumplings. Okay. So you'd be all game for that. I do love a good dumpling. 
Um, so, uh, would you like to know how these fins are harvested? Um, I would assume by killing sharks. Mm-hmm. Or at least cutting off the fins, and then you have weird, like, dolphin-y sh- sharks. Oh, you think they live after that? I don't know. It's cute. I don't know if they're, like, fingernails or if they're, like, a lung. Do they need them that bad? Yeah, they're, like, a lung. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, the sharks are Can caught. live with one and not two? I don't know how it no, works. No, they cut them all off. Oh, so mm-hmm. then they're just like a torpedo that sinks to the bottom? Yes. Cool. So, yeah. So the sharks are caught on lines, pulled onto fishing boats. It's there would f- be a big-ass line. Yeah. Um, I assume these are big sharks. I don't know. No, they catch them anywhere from babies to full-ass grown sharks. What kind of shark? All of them. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's good to have. <sighs> okay. Uh-huh. Yep. It's a fun topic. <laughs> Isn't it? So their fins are, after they've pulled into the boat, their fins are sliced off. Uh, the dorsal fin, fin, pectoral fin, tails, hammerheads, which are very popular fish to fin. They're like broad blades. They cut their eye fins off? Yeah, their broad blades are cut off. Um, and because it fins are so much more valuable from the rest of the shark, uh, they're th- just thrown back in. To feed the rest of the sharks? Like, how does that even... Mm-hmm. Like, yep. The whales? Giant squids. They probably eat them. Yep. No, everything. So the finning shark is thrown back into the water. Uh, you know, actual living, breathing fish. It's... Um, then they're eaten. They they either um, suffocate because they can't move. Fish uh, Sharks always have to be moving in the water in order yeah, to sink. breathe. Yep. Um, they're left they're thrown in alive they're left to suffocate they usually get eaten by other fish Mm -hmm. that are like oh food except they're conscious the entire time yeah and unable to move yes yep and just um suffocating to death in water horror movie slash like serial killer shit yep so um at shark meat itself only goes for like a dollar ish a pound, but the fins go for anywhere between two hundred to five hundred dollars a pound. So in order to make room on fishing boats, they just slice the fins off and throw the cheap meat back into the ocean uh-huh. um, for it to die um, in a really horrible, slow, painful death. It's a tragic circle of life in mm. their eyes. <laughs> yeah. It's not uh, it's not circle of life because it's not natural. Like no, we're doing this. No, it's like, yeah, if if instead of rabbit's feet it was lion's feet, so you capture the lion, cut its legs off, and then let it just sit there. Yes. Pretty yeah. much. It's just tragic as yep. fuck, yes. This is terrible. We should have done a tell me something happy podcast. That, no no. No, no, no. Maybe. Maybe after this. <laughs> um I can get by usually when there's like a murderer. I can at least root for like the victim in this. It's like a, it's not a victimless crime, but it's just, you know, the people doing it are just, yeah. Yeah. Greedy assholes. Yes. Yeah. We'll get to it. We'll run Terrific. some numbers. Uh, yep. So full baby sharks are being caught and finned. <laughs> full baby. Yep. Full baby. Full baby What's sharks. A partial baby shark. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones that the other sharks eat in the womb. Okay. Um, I'm so, holding back baby shark right now, by the way. Oh, God. So they are also being caught and finned, not just the grown adults, which is wildly dangerous for the shark population. Most sharks take 40 plus years to reach sexual maturity. Um, and then they have really long... Wait, for preg- real? Yeah. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. I just assumed a shark lived like 12 years. No. Some of these sharks... The oldest shark found on land, found on, on land. land. <laughs> the oldest shark found in the world. Just fucking walking around <laughs> Miami Beach. So it's up by like Greenland. It's 400 and plus years old. Really? Yeah. Who knew? Yeah. Sharks have lived through all five major extinctions. Well, no, I know, but I just. As a species, they're like 400 I mean, million years old. This is crazy though. Yeah. I just assume they were like, they only, they're. I assume they live like as long as like a dog or a cat, I guess. No, longer than us. Some of them up to hundreds of years. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. It's because they're not breathing our air. (laughs) Don't worry. They're breathing our oceans, which might be worse. They'll start. Yeah, they're they're alive. They'll catch up. Don't worry. They'll start shrinking that down too. We'll get to it. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. I was hoping so. So. We don't um, have enough alcohol in the house. Nope. <laughs> so it's wildly dangerous for the shark, shark population because, like I said, it takes 40 plus years to reach sexual maturity. Um, They have long pregnancies. Some of them are longer than our nine months. Century. Some of them are like 
<laughs> no, like a couple of years. <laughs> this is a joke. Um, and they produce small litters, sometimes just one to two like pups. Wait, sharks have litters? God, I'm so I mean, not good with shark knowledge. <laughs> I assumed a shark had one kid at a time. They usually do. Usually it's only like one to like just a few because um a lot of, they get impregnated with a bunch and then literally the strongest shark will eat the other baby sharks in the wombs and then they give birth and it's usually fucking like one to three. Sharks are ruthless. <laughs> they really are. I fucking love sharks. This information this information I'm spewing from just memory of watching Shark Week every week, like every year for the last two decades. Do you think their sperm swims better than human swim just out of nat- like natural ability? I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> they are like... What if their sperm walked? Oh. Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Our sperm swims. Yes, their sperm one hundred percent. Yes, it's a race, a literal <laughs> foot race to the egg. <laughs> That's what. Whoever's I, better at the four hundred <laughs> yard dash, go. I just see crumb. I just see a picture of crumb just <laughs> running. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> Sorry that. That's all I can hope for. <laughs> if we start out swimming, it's only fitting if they start out running. <laughs> I'm literally crying. (laughs) (laughs) This is the way. So, so, um, (laughs) because it takes so long for them to come to maturity and produce offspring. Come to maturity? Come on now. (laughs) Easy there. Huge population decreases take a very long time to come back from. Yep. So an estimated 73 to 100 million sharks are finned this way every year. Wait, million? Million. Jeez, how many how many sharks are there? There's a ton of different species. So the only one that you're allowed to fin currently, like on sometimes a I forget how big level. the ocean is too. Yeah, like the ocean's gigantic. Yeah. So the only shark that I could find that you're allowed to just outright fin in most countries is the dogfish shark, which doesn't get very big. Yeah, I also like people are like, oh, we barely know like. Our own solar system or the universe, the galaxy. We don't even. We know, know our more own... about the galaxy than we do the. Yeah, ocean. I was gonna say we don't even know. How, like, yeah, that's the part that like blows my mind. Oh yeah. So Jeff sh- Bezos needs to just rocket himself to the bottom of the ocean and never come back. <laughs> I mean, that's probably likely. Mm-hmm. Oh darn! Wouldn't that be a shame? <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So shark fins are also harvested from sharks that become what's called bycatch. Okay. So an additional 50 million sharks a year are finned when they are accidentally caught in nets and lines oh, okay. targeting other fish. Happy so, accident. Yeah. They're like, whoops. Well, this this shark is dead little already. Bo- little Bob Ross sharks. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, no. <laughs> Bob Ross sharks. Why you got to ruin Bob Ross? <laughs> I'm not. I'm He's ruin- a saint. I'm ruining sharks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so, yeah, they're like, whoops, this one's already dead. Yeah. We might as well fin it and throw it back. Gotcha. Um, commercial fishers still use um, old and inefficient ways to catch, such as um, long lines, which is just like specifically what it says, a very long line. <laughs> I like when they name things yep. appropriately. Um, which can go on for miles. And uh, these long lines are just singular lines that then have short lines um, with baited hooks hanging off of the main line. Okay. Yeah. So like every like... Like closed pins on a closed line. Yeah. Well, they have these long lines that come... Like these shorter lines that come down from it and then those lines have multiple hooks on them. Okay. And they're all baited. So they're just dragging barbed wire through the ocean. They're not even dragging. They're letting it sit there oh. and drawing in fish that then ca- that then grab onto the baited okay. lines. Yep. Um, and then there's things called trawls, which are like kind like of taking a puppy to a bar. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of like trawls are like um, what you see when you see like the Alaskan crab fishers and stuff where they just take nets, drop it in the ocean yeah. and scoop them up. Yep. Sometimes it's behind one boat. Sometimes it's between two boats. They scoop them up, bring them on deck. A fuck a shark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That um, seems less can, likely to happen. It, well, yeah, they're probably yeah they're probably less likely to happen. These ones are I feel like a little bit more targeted because they know kind of where like the um, not a hurt school <laughs> the school of fish are like swimming so they just catch them. Gotcha. Well, I feel like and if you're trapping like the more fish on your that that long line, the more likely you are for sharks to come around anyway. Right, because they're literally miles long. Where yeah. this one's a little more targeted of an area. Yep. 
It's just a little better way to and fish. And nets, I feel like, would be less bloody than hooks on lines. Mm-hmm. Um, and less drawn out. Because they literally drop these lines and let them sit for days. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, they also use gill nets or drift nets. So these are mesh nets that extend down from like a rope with buoys on them to keep it afloat. Um, and uh, fish either get wedged in and trapped by the mesh um, or they get tangled where there are little spikes or teeth that hold on to the fish. Um, and then, oh, there's a third thing and I didn't write it down. Didn't matter. We'll They're horrible. Up, yeah. Oh, guild, where they wind up being able to fit through just like a small size of a hole. Like they're just small oh, so enough to fit through them, and then they the can't pull themselves back out. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. And so this is really common way to catch sharks as well. Like just by accident. Okay. Um, so drift nets are awful because not only does it endanger sharks, but up to 85% of a catch is usually discarded dead back into the ocean really, because it wasn't their target fish. Gotcha. It's a really effective way to catch Peter Pettigrew too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the visual in my mind of the fish, like, yeah, being too big to fit through the hole. Yep. Yeah. Oh, like where he's running through the wall and he gets caught <laughs> yeah. when he gets changed yeah. over. Yeah. So um, a documentary that I stumbled across is called Shark Water Extinction. So it was produced by a man named Rob Stewart. Not Rod. Not Rod Stewart. Okay. Rob. Um, so during their filming, they found a drift net over a mile long off the coast of Los Angeles. Okay. Here. That's, yep. Yep. Um, they investigated very early the next morning into kind of like dusk into daylight. Uh-huh. So you can see footage of two sharks stuck and dying in the net. Not it's, great. It's very sad. Um, and then suddenly their boat was their own boat that they were diving off of um, sort of hovered above them. They, uh-huh. like, it motored above them. You don't want to say swam. Boats don't swim. Yep. It motored above them in the water and then the two divers, one of which was Rob, uh, surfaced by the boat and their crew was yelling at them to get in and that they were being shot at by a small group of armed men in this little speedboat. Oh. It's that serious. Okay. Yeah. They knew that people were fucking with their lines and they came out guns a-blazing. That's fun. Yeah. Um, And so these activists... Um, especially in this, there's a lot of them that try to expose things, but this one's a really big one. Um, I'm pretty sure that they're this, the shark water extinction is the second documentary. I'm like 99.9% sure that the shark water, the first one is the one that like first was, cause I remember being exposed to this during shark week when I was a teenager yeah. and being like, Oh my God, this is horrible. Um, so I'm pretty sure they're first documentary is the one that i saw as a teenager and so when i stumbled across this one i was like oh my god it's full circle yep a decade later it's still going on 15 years later whatever we're old yeah (laughs) um math's hard so it is um so these activists that are trying to expose all this illegal trade are in legitimate danger um so a lot of activists and conservatives conservationists have yeah have helped make uh, some sort of headway in the tackling of like the slow extinction of sharks. 90 plus countries have passed some sort of regulations regarding shark finning and the general like fishing of sharks. So regulations vary anywhere from putting a cap on the like weight percentage of fins to full sharks caught. So like, oh, if you catch a hundred pounds worth of shark, which Obviously, that's an underestimate. Yeah. 100 pounds of shark, you're only allowed to bring in five pounds of just fins. Okay. Um, It's like 5% right now. So they try to make it so you're going to take the whole shark, essentially. Yes. Gotcha. Which creates other problems, which we'll get to. Terrific. So um, they want, they also, some countries will require fins being attached to the shark when they are brought in. So then you have the whole yeah. fish instead of being so wasteful. And then they there's also countries that... Um, only allow importation of shark fins what, rather than catching it from their own waters. They're only allowed to import shark fins. So then, yeah, the countries that don't allow that just become hotbeds for it, essentially. Yes, sir. Um, all the way to like the ban of the just consumption of shark fins in any form. Mm-hmm. So the largest consumption of shark fins is obviously China since and other 
Asian country since that's part of their culture. Yep. Um, and they refused to ban fishing because of the cultural repercussions involved. Many people feeling like it's like a kind of a war against their own their own culture, which I kind of get. But like also we know that rhino horns don't cure cancer. So maybe we shouldn't hunt rhino. Yeah. Like you can't be like, oh, sharks have a medicinal effect. No, they don't. Yeah. Or it creates this delicious soup when it's just. It's literally nothing. They yeah. literally, it's just the novelty of it. There's no flavor. All the flavor in shark fin soup comes from the broth. Um, and there's. It's a shitty, it's really not a good texture, and there's no nutritional value. It's literally just for the novelty of being like, oh, we're humans. We're apex predators of the land, so we have to kill the apex predator of the water instead. Yeah. It's just an ego game. So in the U.S., only nine states and all of our territories, like Guam and Puerto, Puerto Rico, Rico. Mm-hmm. Um, have banned the act of finning and the sale of shark fins. So we've also banned shark finning in our waters, but we still allow for the importation of fins into the U.S. But here's the problem. According to Oceanas, which is one of my sources, um, representative, her name is Laura Snyder, according to the FAO, which I meant to Google and I didn't, the uh, countries exporting fins to the U.S. are reporting uh, importing. They are reporting <laughs> importing of fins. They're re-importing. Yeah. Up to seven times more than what the United States is reporting taking in. Oh. hmm Someone's fudging the number somewhere. Uh-huh. So uh, this is because there's loopholes um, in the regulations passed back in like 2010. Okay. Of the uh, one of the loopholes is uh, only fins that are received dry, so they'll catch the fins. Shark fins dry nicely, um, and uh, so that's why it's really easy just to catch, like catch them, fin them, throw them in the boat. They're dry really easy, so they're easy to store and just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, so only fins that have been received dry have to be reported as shark fins. So they keep them moist. Yes. So fins that are brought in, quote unquote, wet, which is fresh or on ice or frozen, um, sellers don't have to report them as shark fins. That seems like an easy ass loophole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) It's almost like every regulation by the United States has giant loopholes and sometimes it feels like it's on purpose. Right. Like this was an easy ass misstep. Yep. Maybe too easy. Yep. So some country, yeah, there's no black and white in the United States. It's like, here's like 1% of it's black and 1% of it's white and then 98% is gray. Have fun. Look at you doing good math. I almost said 99, but I I, I was like, nope, two. (laughs) One plus one is two. So in countries such as the Bahamas, they have passed laws and regulations that put them at the forefront of shark conservation efforts. Look at the Bahamas go. It just seems that way. Oh, good. Yep. Uh, Way to ruin that one before you even started. Uh, yep. You're welcome. So uh, they ensure, um, ensuring that regulations are being followed and patrolling f- for any like nefarious shark finning activities is rather difficult because it is very expensive. Smaller countries like the Bahamas mm-hmm. with less infrastructure struggle or just blatantly don't care <laughs> to like prevent we're a tourist country. We don't care about shark. Finning. Exactly. Um, here's the thing. Side note. I'm glad you said that. So here's the thing about shark finning and being a tourist company, okay. a lot or, or country, a lot of eco tourism is a big thing right now. And there are reports done that estimate that sharks are worth $1.6 million. One shark. $1.6 million in ecotourism versus the two to $500 that you're going to get out of them for catching them and finning them. Okay. So they're like, why are you guys killing sharks? You do know it's more beneficial for your country to have ecotourism to come see the sharks than to just, than to f- just feed people them. To feed a few rich people. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so I'm glad I didn't put that in here. It's just a number that's like shocking. You're like, hi, think of the big picture. Yeah. Like, don't I d- look. I know that people bitch about millennials 
needing like the instant gratific instant gratification. But like this is kind of a prime example of it. Like just wait a couple of years and you will make more money by tenfold than you would yeah. if you just immediately killed this shark. Yeah, don't go out on your boat and kill like one shark. Go out on your boat with a cage and do shark tours and you you have a more profitable business. Yes. Um so in the shark water documentary that I was watching, they actually got on a boat where these people this is really sad. Also the same fucking like the wrong side of what you're getting at like they're like here's the mark and missing it by a mile yeah this fucking shark tour that they went on was a bunch of rich fucks deciding that they wanted to catch sharks okay so in order to catch the shark they catch them literally like it takes 30 to 45 minutes to catch a shark they reel it in and the guy blatantly was like i've probably caught like fifty thousand sharks like on this on, boat, on yeah. his boat that he does for his tours. People yeah. have caught them. Um, and uh, it they reel them in. They And by the, t- by the time, the time that it takes for them to unhook them, take the trophy picture, being like, I caught this shark and release them. This is how fragile sharks are. They will die. In that short time period. You will let them go. And within a week or less, they're going to die. Yeah. So even like, the going out and just catching a shark and releasing it for the novelty of it, there's a 90 some odd percent chance that that fish is going to die from that. Yeah. If it's, so, so it's literally just as bad as finning. Yeah. It's finning without all the worry of being caught by your government. Yeah. 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 It's sad. It's, I just can't. <laughs> I'm fine. The world is burning. <laughs> right? We're fine. Everything's fine. So, um, there's a lot of activities that are really hard to track or um, take them like the, they don't, a lot of countries don't have the expenses to be able to, to stop a lot of these illegal activities or the countries are literally being bribed by the mafia. Oh, fun twist. Yeah. Um, so the Bahamas is one of those places So once it was a haven of shark conservation, but the latest president has gotten very lax with maintaining these regulations. Um, In the shark water dock that I've mentioned, the crew captures tons of illegal fin holding in warehouses. So they literally take drones out of of these big warehouses and they're trying to catch evidence of them doing illegal finning. Uh And they find like on the tops of these huge warehouses that they hold like fish at just like huge layers of shark fins that have been laid on the top of these warehouses to dry to dry. Yeah. Um, so they, this crew, they've traveled all over the world, exposing the seedy underground of fish finning and shark finning, like shark fishing tourism. Highly recommend it. It's awesome. So once a fish is caught, even for sport, like I said, just being pulled out of the water for the mere minutes to remove the hooks and <clears throat> snap a trophy photo and release the animals still pretty much going to die yeah. from that action. So according to footage captured by shark, the shark water crew in countries that have banned fishing, but allowed like, or finning, but have allowed the importation of fins, uh, the fishermen have found other loopholes. A uh, common practice is to just transfer their catch from their fishing boats because they're not allowed to come in as just plain fishing boats. Uh They transfer them from their boats to international shipping container boats and just simply head into the harbor and unload. So that's that's super cool. Yeah, just a little handoff and away you go. Yep. The crew was also um, taken to a site in Panama, the country, not the city. Okay. Um, Which is a site of a large shark nursery. So it's literally like shooting fish in a barrel. Oh, good. Yep. There, uh, at this particular site, there were 800 pounds of fins that had been confiscated by, like, local con- uh-huh. conservationists. Um, this is where fins are flown out to Asia, like, Asian countries. So, the 800 pounds was made up of 38,868 fins, some of which were from endangered species species like the smooth and scalloped hammerhead sharks this is an equivalent of three hundred thousand dollars worth of sharks yeah just 800 pounds of it only thirty-eight thousand fins and 1.7 
million. Or no, not 1.7. 700 and... What was the number? 75 million? 75 million sharks a year are pulled out of the oceans for finning. And this Uh is only 38,000. So it's a billion dollar industry. Uh, Yeah. So fisheries are also taking advantage of the fins must still be attached to the shark regulation uh, by creating a demand for shark meat. Mm -hmm. So it is sold in markets and delis in Asian countries and like tropical islands and such. Similar to deli meat counters like here where you come in and be like, oh, I want like this much ham. They're like, no, I'll take a pound of of shark instead. Okay. So these meats usually consist of like hammerheads, white tips, and like some places don't even know. And they tout that they're selling it fresh caught that morning. So shark meat is also getting rebranded and sold back to the public in other forms. So in the shark water doc, doc, uh, there's a lot of bee footage of Rob Stewart perusing the aisles of a grocery store. The brands were, they were blurred out in the documentary, but like, you know, Uh you can tell. Yeah. Yeah, If you have cats or any type of pet, you know. You can deduce. Mm -hmm. So by my deduction... Not theirs. Uh, you can definitely tell that he was pulling Meow Mix, Fancy Feast, Imitation Crab, like the ones in like the blue mm-hmm. label, um, Caesar's Dog Food. There was a fish sandwich from McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he sent this all back to a lab for DNA analysis. 33% of the pet food that he had uh, pulled from the shelves had white tip and mako shark DNA in it, an uh, black head oh sorry not blackhead black tip hammerhead milk and blue shark dna was found in the beauty products that he'd pulled what were the beauty products i didn't see but huh. here's fun fact this is where my knowledge comes in squalene is a common beauty in- ingredient it's full of omega fatty acids in it it helps rebuild your lipid barrier uh-huh. so that you know it protects you your skin from the rest of the world it used to be pulled from sharks Okay. Now you can get it out of olives. So like you triple refine olives and you wind up with squalene. But they might still be taken out of sharks. Yes. A hundred percent cheaper. The cheaper way to do it is from sharks. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to find beauty lines that, that are animal cruelty free because chances are if something has squalene in it, it's, it's, it's not from, yeah. from, from olives. It's from shark byproducts. Yeah. Um, so, uh, those aren't the ocean eyes you want. No, they are not. Sorry. <laughs> no, they are not. Billy Eilish. Right. <laughs> what an obscure reference. Thank you. Like early Billy Eilish. <laughs> so, um shark DNA can fa- be also be found in rock salmon and and shank that you can find like local grocery stores that well, humans consume. Like your shank it? Mhm. Uh, it can also be found in pet food, fertilizer and cosmetics. Terrific. Yep. So, uh Eating shark is also wild, wildly dangerous. We obviously know that humans um, have fully polluted our own oceans, and a lot of the bottom-feeding sea creatures have high levels of like mercury and lead and other chemicals in them. Mm-hmm. So it's why they caution people to like not eat too much shrimp. Uh, and as you move up the oceanic food chain, uh, these chemicals can become more concentrated in the predatory animals. By the time that we make it up to the make it up the food chain to the apex predators, i.e., the shark, it is extremely high levels of toxins, making a lot of sharks unsafe for human consumption. Makes sense. Yeah. So they're finning these sharks, and because we have the regulations that say, "Hey, you need to bring the sharks in with their fins attached," they're like, "Oh, we have nothing better to do with this meat, so I guess we'll resell it." Mm-hmm. A lot of that shit you're eating will kill you. Well, you know. Yeah. Some of you may die. Yep. So in uh, cultures that do eat shark meat, it's not sold to children or women. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Because we, we make the babies. Real Titanic situation around mm-hmm. here. Well, we also make the babies, so they don't want like weird deformities and stuff. Mm-hmm. So just to keep adding flames to the fire... The rapid decrease in the shark population is obviously disrupting the oceanic food chain, just like they told us in elementary school science Mm -hmm. uh, that would happen when you remove apex predators. Um, A giant squid's going to rule the whole world someday. I'm sure. Yeah, we're going to have krakens about. We don't even know how many giant squids there are. 
that's horrifying. We don't even know shit about them. Bro, okay, I remember watching a doc where the guy who made Titanic like went into this tiny stuff. I just threw my anxiety pen. It's it's caught in your shank, it don't <laughs> worry. <laughs> I'm so upset. Where he like Yeah, he Fuck, who what was his name? Uh James Cameron. Yep. James Cameron went in that tiny little like yellow submarine. Uh-huh. I fucking hate that song. Um I love the Beatles hate that song. Stop it. PTSD from Bandcamp. So he went down and they like found a a giant squid and it was like a two hour documentary on how exciting it was that they found a giant squid. Yeah. They're very hard like they are insanely unknown. Yeah. It's fucking scary. It's awesome. And they fucking <laughs> they wash up on like the ocean like it's no big fucking deal. Right. Um and the people are like, We don't even know where it came from. You're like, Cool. <laughs> cool, cool. Um I thought I wanted to be a marine biologist once. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> so a scientific study conducted in um in the population like with sharks. Uh the population Oh my gosh, I lost my spot. Hold on. Wait, found it. Conducted. I feel like there was a skipped portion here. Mm-hmm. So it was conducted in the mid-Atlantic off the U.S. They showed that 11 species of sharks that had been nearly eliminated, mm-hmm. the population of 10 out of 12 of the prey species for that sharks uh, fed on, um, it had increased so much that uh, they damaged the ecosystem by wiping out other species that were further down the, the food chain. Mm-hmm. So it got, so like the second species in control got so out of control that it just ate everything else because the sharks weren't there to eat them. Yeah, makes sense. Yep. So a second example is the reduction of the smooth hammerhead, which caused their prey's population, the rays, uh-huh. which is funny because rays are considered sharks, um, to increase so the larger ray population now eats more scallops and clams so this hurts the scallops and clams population and reduces what's available for human consumption gotcha yeah so it's not just like oh who cares they're whatever the ecosystem's out of whack you're like no bro a lot of people eat scallops and clams and now there's less food for us yeah, well, it just drives the price up, so the fishermen who are out there getting the fins anyways make more money. Oh, good for them. Right? And eventually we're all going to die because there's no food left. Bean, Capitalism, baby. Beans for everyone. <laughs> so uh, so now that we have another food source that's depleted. Terrific. So about 90% of the shark population has been eliminated over the last 30 years. 90% of it? 90%. Jesus. So some species have only seen a 60 to 70% drop, though. Look at them go. Yeah. Uh, so our friends, the oceanic white tip shark. Mm-hmm. You remember them? Yeah. Yeah. From the terrible, worst, <laughs> worst man-eater episode ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was uh, once the most abundant large predator in the world, but due to their large fins, they are a favorite of shark the shark finning industry. Mm-hmm. Their population has dropped by 99%. Oh, that's uh, aggressive. Yeah. Too bad that it didn't happen in the 40s. they would probably have a lot less soldiers die. Right? <laughs> that's so, insane, though. Yeah. 99%. 99%. So the smooth and, scal- and scalloped hammerheads are also a fan favorite. Both sharks have been added to the Appendix 2 of the Endangered Species list, which is a list of animals that are dangerously close to becoming endangered and need regulations for hunting to stop the endangerment from happening. Gotcha. 1.3 to 2.7 million hammerheads are finned each year. It's a lot. Yep. So in 2019, CITES, which is the Convention on International Trade in, in Endangered Species, added 18 more species of sharks and rays, like the mako shark, yep. to the Appendix 2 list. This podcast is going to be called Make Scott a Vegan. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, the friends on this list who were already there include the basking in whale sharks, hammerhead sharks, oceanic white tips, great white sharks, manta rays, and the thresher sharks, and like a shit ton others. Um, And those are the ones that are like, we have to be careful not to overfish. Mm -hmm. So, all seven species of the sawfish are on the appendix. The appendix. Not the sawfish. I know. They They could shank you. Right? Yeah. Norwals and, and sawfish. Uh-huh. Which one will come out on top? Lily has a book about that. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Those versus books. Yep. 
Um, so the sawfish, all seven species are on the appendix one list, which is the list of species that are headed toward extinction. It's not good. Nope. So conservationists and activists are working their asses off to bring awareness to the shark fin trade. Some even lose their lives doing it. So on the last dive to get a glimpse of the endangered sawfish, Rob Stewart went on his last dive, one of three that day, using a rebreather, which is a type of air tank that doesn't produce bubbles, allowing people to get closer to marine animals. Uh Uh-huh. He resurfaced with his instructor, 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 who passed out as he was being pulled onto the boat. Uh huh. Rob was still in the water, but had initially like waved, indicating that he was fine. But as uh, everyone was tending to the instructor who was actively passing out, Rob disappeared. Okay. No one saw it happened. Did he get eaten by a shark? Uh, no. Uh, the crew tried to find him. The Coast Guard and volunteers searched for three days until he was finally recovered 200 feet under the surface of the ocean. But thanks to Rob's footage from the bay in, in Los Angeles, uh-huh. uh, drift nets have been banned in California. And a mere 6% of China's like luxury hotels and banquet halls have stopped serving shark fin soup. I mean, that's probably a fairly small portion. But, it is. But that's still it's a good start. Man. Yeah, it could make it. I mean, it could have like exponential benefits. Mm-hmm. So, um, remember when I said like there's a court case that's going on and it's been like five years in the making? Uh huh. Rob's death will be my next episode. Oh, okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> like next episode next week? Yeah. Oh, you're going to like back him up? I didn't know if you were uh-huh. going to like give it a little rebreather. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's a terrible joke. Yeah, it was bad. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to do a blip and I was like, whatever, this will probably be pretty quick. And then I started looking into it, and I was like, this is not pretty quick. It's not just he passed out, too? Yeah. There's a lot of court cases and stuff going on, so... Okay. We'll talk about it. Research inbound? Mm-hmm. Terrific. Um, so, if we don't start making huge changes, it's estimated that sharks will be extinct within 10 to 20 years. Jesus, that's not very long from now. No, All sharks? All sharks. Fucking shark fin soup eaters. Yeah. Get a life. Yeah. So eat something else. Make some Italian wedding soup. Isn't that a thing? <laughs> yeah, with the beans and the yeah. and the, and the noodles. Nobody has to die for that one. <laughs> no. Come on, China, become a little more Italian. <laughs> <laughs> so um that's my story about shark fins. That's terrible. Yeah. You have horrible sources for this <laughs> awesome story you and like yeah. So I have um www.hsi.org. Um which I used a couple of different things. There was like issues. There was a couple different sources for like shark finning. It's the Humane Society International mm-hmm. branch. Um, and then I also used an article. Oh, sorry. I also used awionline.org for shark finning. And then I found discoverywildlife.com. There's an article tile titled, Why is shark finning? Oh, sorry. What is shark finning and why is it a problem? I use animals.howstuffworks.com, endangered species, shark finning. I use Oceana articles. Um, Oceana testifies before Congress. And then they had a PDF, which was titled "Why um, Shark Fin Trade and Why It Should Be Banned in the United States. I also used um, Oceana, oh, sorry, ocean.ci.edu um, with an article that was titled Shark Finning. Sharks turned prey, and then the Amazon dock shark finner. Uh, sh- sorry, shark water and the extinction by Rob Stewart. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure I watched the first one of Shark Water, which was made like 15 years before that. So That's, it's really good. It will, sources. yeah, it will pull at your heart strings because like the last 20 minutes of it is just dedicated to Rob Stewart's life. So it's really sad. Too, oh yeah, so. That's, I don't like when. A bunch of innocent animals die, and then a human dies on top of it. Yeah, that that's trying, trying to save said yes. innocent animals. Yeah, yep. and that's why it's important to watch Shark Week and really appreciate these things. Like, you cannot be mad at something. We're not supposed to be in the water. You right? can't be like, "Oh my god, these great whites are killing everybody." And be like, yeah, because it thinks you're a seal, and then it bites you and goes, "Ugh, this is awful," and spits you out. Yeah. It's not his fault that his mouth is bigger than you are. Maybe we shouldn't be in the fucking ocean. 
just, you know, an idea. Right? Crazy concept. Yep. Or just stop eating shark fin soup if it's going to kill all the sharks within the next 10 years. Yeah. That's an idea, too. Like, just stop. I'm so angry. Right? So it's been a rough week for me researching this. <laughs> yeah. So. I can understand that. Yeah. Anyway. I, I like sharks. I love sharks to begin with. And then I just... It just makes me really upset. And right. I try not to be a didactic asshole about it. But, like, I also maybe we just want to stop eating meat. At least ones that are going to be extinct within the next decade, yeah. Yeah, like just sustainable sources. <laughs> yeah, sustainably sourced fish, like not sharks. They have farms. There's farms in the ocean where they're farming fish, mm-hmm. where they know that the only thing they're catching are the fish that they're farming. Yeah. Maybe do that. Maybe. Crazy concept. Maybe shop at Aldi's. <laughs> Because that's what they do. I don't know if they do all of it for all of theirs, but... Look, just still, read your labels. Just read your labels, for sure. Yeah. Do Sorry, so. I didn't mean to get all, like, hoity and, like, didactic, but, like, <clears throat> it started really sad, and I was like, oh, this would be a great topic. And then I researched it more, and I was like, oh, God, I'm so angry. Yeah. It could have gone very much sideways. Yeah. Anywho, thanks I tried for, to maintain myself. Thanks for listening. If you made it this far... I'm sorry. This was <laughs> This was terrible. <laughs> I would much rather hear about murder than this. Yeah. Like this this feels like an, a snowball effect, and it's scary. And very much out of our control. Yeah, it's not a one-off thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, congratulations for taking that all in. Yeah. Go about your life and just mean mug everyone now. <laughs> yeah. Maybe don't buy things from Fancy Feast. <laughs> right? Well, what are you going to do? Yeah, just not anything with shark in it. Good luck. Godspeed. <laughs> anyway thanks for listening it sounds like next week will be equally as happy so tune in for that um we appreciate all of our old listeners yes and our new listeners. and new alike yes and thanks for all your support yes that's why we keep doing this that's why she keeps putting me through this why she keeps writing these horrible papers keeps <laughs> reading them to all of us <laughs> and now we're gonna go cry ourselves to sleep so. which is gonna happen very <laughs> quickly after this yep anyway thanks for listening have a great night <laughs> Try to. <laughs> oh, goodbye. Okay, bye. <laughs>